Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Mask on or mask off? Businesses are setting their own rules as the new state requirements take effect in just a few hours. And weekend construction headache, the major freeway closure that you need to know about before you hit the road. And taking a look outside here, we are in Ooh. for a gorgeous day. You just can't beat that wow. sunrise out there. We'll check in with Paul here in just a minute. Man. It has been a while since we've seen such a beautiful live shot right at 6 a.m. Good morning, I'm Priya Mann. And I'm Grant Herms. Thanks for joining us here this morning on Local 4 News Today. I mean, we're talking 70 degree perfect weather for a few days straight. Yeah, that's why Paul uh, Andrew took the weekend off. He knew <laughs> <laughs> he knew we were in for a good one. You know what's really weird is that usually when I end up filling in for the other guys, we end up with some big storm or something. It always seems to happen when I'm working, but this one didn't work out that way. You already saw the other Skycam shot. We're just uh, starting to see that uh, twilight here, that pre-dawn twilight, and temperatures have actually dropped quite a bit just in the past hour or two. We're in the 40s across the area, but notice here the air is calm, and that is good news. So it's actually not a bad start to the day, and with the dry air overhead, temperatures will rise quickly this morning. You can see here we have a lot of clear sky. There are just a couple little harmless clouds around, but this rain off to the west, it's going to become more scattered as it heads this way, not get to us till tonight. So today, a dry day. Clouds will tend to increase this afternoon, but with highs in the low 70s, I'd say we're in pretty good shape. Now, south wind, it's going to be light, but that direction means that it's going to be cooler on the east side. So those of you near the big lakes, especially north of those big lakes, it is going to be quite a bit cooler during the afternoon hours. All right, we'll be back to talk about the rest of the weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Paul. And we have a major freeway closure this weekend that will affect your drive. North and southbound I-75 at 8 Mile to I-696. It's closed until Monday morning at 5, and you can use Woodward as a detour. Also, southbound 75 from the Davis into I-94 will be closed until Monday morning as well. You can also use Woodward as a detour. Well, time now is 602 and we are less than three hours away from the state lifting most mask requirements for people who are fully vaccinated. Here's a look at what's changing starting at nine o'clock. If you're fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask indoors. If you are not vaccinated or haven't gotten a second dose yet, you must continue to wear a mask inside. Masks are no longer required outdoors regardless of your vaccination status. And then after July 1st, the indoor mask mandate expires for everyone. But businesses can still ask you to mask up this morning. Yeah, many big chains have updated their policies. Places like Target and Meyer are keeping the mask mandate in place. But Trader Joe's and Costco are easing up. It's a lot to sort through. Our Mara McDonald explains. Michigan's former plan to require 70% of the population to be vaccinated in order to lose the masks. Well, it's out the window after the CDC says fully vaccinated people don't need to wear masks. Governor Whitmer releasing a video on Twitter announcing her decision to get on board. Everyone who is two weeks out from their second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine can go without a mask, outdoors and indoors. If you're not fully vaccinated, the CDC and the state want you to remain masked up indoors, but the only mechanism to ensure that is your own honor. So now small businesses across the metro, like Studio One Salon, are trying to figure out next steps. This has just thrown a wrench in what we're supposed to do. Lara hasn't sent anything out, at least in the last hour. I haven't checked to see if there was a, a mandate from them on do we get to stop temperature checking? Do we get to remove masks? Um, obviously, we don't know who's been vaccinated and who's not. Hillary Heacock would have liked some more detailed guidance from the state. Clients at her salon will be told masks are still required until some more details come from the state, which the director of MDHHS says will be soon. We plan to have all of our guidance updated by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, because I know we have to look at quite a few different documents. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. And as of Friday, 55.7% of Michiganders 16 and older have gotten at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. New infections continue to slow. Michigan added more than 1,766 new cases and 33 deaths in the past 24 hours. We know there's a lot to take in with these new mask rules, and you can find complete coverage of which businesses are still requiring them and which ones aren't on the homepage of clickondetroit.com. 
We've also learned that Governor Whitmer's chartered flight to Florida in March was paid for by a nonprofit fund. Michigan Transition 2019 paid for the nearly $28,000 flight, according to documents provided by the governor's chief of staff. Governor Whitmer paid $855 for her seat on the flight with her own money. The governor said she took the trip to visit her father, who has a chronic illness, and her office says she worked while she was there. The governor's chief of staff maintains the flight and expenses are in compliance with the law. The Oakland County prosecutor is launching an investigation into a former assistant prosecutor and the handling of a murder conviction. Jawan Deering is serving a life sentence accused of setting a fire that killed five children in Royal Oak Township in 2000. Oakland County prosecutor Karen McDonald says a review of the case found problems with informants who had charges dismissed or sentences reduced based on their cooperation. The case was prosecuted by Greg Townsend. He now works at the Michigan Attorney General's office and is part of a team handling the Governor Whitmer kidnapping plot. The AG's office says he has been reassigned during this investigation. The Innocence Clinic at the University of Michigan Law School is trying to get Deering a new trial. And police are searching for a man with a rifle who stole a car at gunpoint in Oakland County. The carjacking happened on Evergreen near 13 Mile in Southfield yesterday. Before that, police say the man shot a car while trying to carjack another driver. Now, this is who police are looking for. Take a good look. He may be driving a stolen black 2016 Toyota Corolla with black rims. The license plate on that car is EFX 3987. A community comes together to rally around a family who lost everything in a fire. It happened up north, but their ties to Metro Detroit are strong. Jason Colthorpe was at that fundraiser that helped get the family back on their feet. This is one where I, I like to think of it as a role reversal. Their mom and their grandparents lost everything in a fire. They almost didn't make it out alive. Now the kids are trying to make sure they get all the way back. This is one family night Corinne Wagner wishes she didn't have to organize. A fire in April at her family's home up north in Harrisville was devastating. Really yeah. hard to like wrap our minds around it because we've been going to that house since we were little girls and the house isn't there now and all the memories are gone and all the everything. pictures, everything. It can't be replaced. It was Corinne and Courtney's grandparents' home and their mom was there too, helping take care of them. The fire nearly took all three with the house. Their mom, Kim, had to jump out of a window. The whole house was, was just filled with smoke. There's no way that she could walk out. So she said the only thing that she was really able to grab was her phone and her puppy. She yep. had to break the window and climb out. Their grandmother also suffered serious burns. She was on life support for three weeks. Now that things have calmed down, the children have become parents in a way. We've had friends, family members, strangers donate clothes, um, coffee pots, shoes, coats. Corinne organized a GoFundMe, a donation drive, and a fundraiser Friday night at Dooley's in Shelby Township, where she worked with her mom. It was really tough to see that and to see, you know, our family like that. It was, it was difficult. So something in me just automatically was like, this is what I'm doing. You heard in there uh, how the, the mom got out by knocking out a window and, and saving her puppy first. Well, they did lose two other dogs in this fire. The grandmother, by the way, is back home. She's recovering and the donations keep pouring in. They're still raising money, still raising uh, donations. And if you'd like more information on that, we have it with our story. Click on Detroit.com. I'm Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. Thank you, Jason. Time now is 6.09, and this is your final weekend to file your taxes. State and federal returns are due before midnight on Monday. The deadline was extended for the second year in a row because of the pandemic, of course. The Michigan Department of Treasury says people who file electronically should expect state returns within two weeks. You can still request an extension. Grant, I feel like between the both of us, you filed your taxes way before I did. They, they were in months ago. We got the return already, and it has been spent. So. I bet. I bet. Uh, so I actually, you know, I'm a procrastinator. Uh, filed my taxes last week. Didn't know that it wasn't due until Monday. Otherwise, I would have been busy this weekend. Well, I mean, now you got all day today to spend it in the sunshine, right? Yeah, exactly. And Paul, you have got a beautiful forecast for us. Yeah, and our sky cam, you can see it right here. The sun is actually just, look at that. 
can see it right there. It's uh, just getting ready to come up right now. And we're going to have a fairly decent day ahead. But then we got to talk about Sunday. One little fly in the ointment. And we don't like flies in our ointment. We'll break that down for you straight ahead. What are you guys hiding from us parents? <laughs> the spying apps that parents will put on your phones don't mean anything to you? There's a way to get around almost all of them. You can purchase drugs on any of the social media apps. I can go to my phone right now and show you like five different stories. Be like, hey, you want drugs? Like just like right there, not hidden, right, right in the public. It's become so normalized. Like this is what's going on. It's so popular. Hey, your kids are doing this. Help them going forward. Help them. 